Hi, everybody. Welcome to Safer Ha Mitzvahs. Today is day 86. I'm going to do a very quick recap of um, the past few days. So on day 82, we learned about Yibum, which is if a man passes away and him and his wife had no children, then the brother is obligated um, to marry her kind of as a continuation of his legacy. If he wants to opt out, that's on day 83, we learned about what we call Chalitza. So in order to circumvent Yibam, you can't just say no. You have to actually do a ceremony, which is He, um, She takes off his shoe from his foot. And that's, in short, the ceremony of Chalitza, which makes him irresponsible. Like he basically has now removed from this responsibility of marrying her and she's free to marry whoever she chooses. Day 84 is all about... Um, relations with this person. So basically, if a woman either didn't do Yibam, either she didn't get married to her brother-in-law, or she didn't do Chalitza, or she's been, you know, released from marrying her brother-in-law, she's not allowed to be married to anyone else. She's still tied down to this family until she's, either any of these actions have been taken, and then she's free to um, move on. Okay, day 85. A lot of um, interesting things. So one is Mitzvah 218, the law of a rapist. If a man rapes a virgin, obviously that's a terrible, terrible crime. He's obligated to marry her if she chooses, of course. But this isn't just uh, fun and games. You you want to sleep with a woman, you are now connected to her and you can't just, you know, walk away. Of course, only if she consents. Um, and then... Part of that is another mitzvah is that she is not, he is not allowed to divorce her. Sorry, so 220 is that he has to marry her. 218 is she is not allowed, to, he is not allowed to divorce her um, just because he feels like it, right? You, again, you're tied. <laughs> you can't just, because there's something called consequences. Um, and of course, again, this is only if the woman consents. If she wants to divorce him for whatever reason she's allowed it, but he can't just say, oh, I just want to walk away. Um, next, 358, is this is slandering. Sorry, I'm trying to remember what this is about. Um, Okay, right. we're going to move on to day 86. Okay, that's today. Today's mitzvah is the mitzvah of Sota. Sota is a fascinating um, mitzvah, which was source for 220. Sorry, it is v'chi yiftach ish pesula. Okay? Um, okay, day 86, the mitzvah of Sota. So it's a mitzvah of 223. Ish, ish, kisista ishto. A man, if his wife goes astray. So... Um, fascinating mitzvah, lots of nuances. To sum it up, what does it mean? What's a sota, a woman that goes astray? It's a woman where there's very, um, a wife that there's very substantial evidence to suspect, we never know for sure, but to suspect that she has been, um, with another man and cheated in short. So, the way it works is there has to be substantial evidence. In short, that means that in front of two witnesses, he had, the husband had warned her, there had to be some kind of warning, right? You know, my wife, dear, I love you. I see that you're hanging out with this and the fellow. It has to be very specific. It can't be like he warned her, like, don't go to the certain parties or don't go to certain places or, you know, those types of people. It has to be something specific. I saw, you know, Sarah, you were hanging out with Yitzchak. Some things make me very uncomfortable. Please don't hang out with him again or, you know, do anything. Don't go to the clue, et cetera. In front of two witnesses, and then two witnesses separately, it doesn't have to be the same people, see her going into a closed, secluded area together. Obviously, nobody knows what happened inside, but this is enough um, circumstantial evidence to cause a suspicion of infidelity. And so the husband has a right to um, bring her to the Besa Mikdash. And the way it works is, she um, is made to feel embarrassed, and I'll touch upon that in a second. Her hair is, her, her hair covering is removed. This is one of 
the sources actually that we know that hair covering is biblical. Um, she's made bare her shoulders, it says. She and then they basically make these waters um, where they write a scroll of Sota of these details. It says Hashem's name, one of God's holy, holy names that we never write or never say. The papers are ripped up, the papers ripped up, and it's put in the water, and she drinks this water. And if she is guilty, then if there's some kind of reaction that she has to the water. There is, it says, just one example, that if she um, has a schos of learning Torah, then maybe the um, the effects of the water will happen later. And does this mean that she has the merit because she herself learns Torah, because she supports others that learn Torah? But so there's different, um, I guess, reaction times. Um, if she is not guilty, then she is actually blessed and will be blessed with a lot of fine blessings. If her husband is guilty of some of uh, similar crimes that she was, uh, you know, accused of, he will he will reap the his intestines will whatever will happen will happen to him. So there is this idea that if she, and of course, if it's proven that she's guilty, then of course their marriage is obsolete. They go their separate ways. So similarly, if she admits and says, I don't want to drink soda waters, you know, I, she's able to give up that right, but at the expense of that means the marriage is over. You can't go back. He also doesn't have to uh, enforce the water drinking. And like I said before, it could be because he's afraid of his truths coming out. Um, Really, really, like a lot of these mitzvot, it's all about a deterrent. Um, and like we've spoken multiple times, the the um, the preciousness and the holiness of matrimony, of marriage, is a big deal. We don't treat it lightly. And let's, yes, like we said, we discussed this last week. People make mistakes. People have temptations. I I'm not going to jump to say that someone who is a sota, who is suspected, is a terrible person. No. We have Yitzharas. Um, but that's also why we need to be told, yes, you have a Yitzhar, but this is a freaking big deal. Don't do it. Also, we have to be told, you know, you know, stop yourself in your tracks. You see that you are, you know, maybe drawn to a certain person. It's not appropriate. Don't do it. Stay away from them. Make sure you're not secluded in a room where you're gonna really um be dealing with a major, major, major struggle. Um Okay, the other thing that she does is she brings up a meal offering. Um, it's called mincha. She doesn't um, use flour, which is a typical mincha. She uses barley. Uh, the symbolism of that is because barley is more of an animalistic food, right? It's more part of animal feed, even though we bring it up for other carbonos as well. Every, oh, there's always significance. But here the idea is you were just kind of pursuing animalistic you know, you're going after passion and drive and forgot about the, the sanctity of your marriage. Um, okay, a huge, huge, huge part of Soto, which probably the number one lesson we could take for us is Hashem rips up his name. Okay, we know how we treat, right? A little, a cinder falls on the floor, we pick it up frantically, we kiss it, uh, any piece of Seamus, we put it in our place. And then when it, you know, when we're able to and it accumulates, we bring it to a place where they take care of it, Geniza, and they bury it. We treat it with such respect. We don't even say Hashem's name without purpose. But here, Hashem's name is written out in completion, right? So not G slash D. The entire thing in its original Lashon Kodesh, and it's torn, it's ripped up, right? Just imagine that gasp um, that you they must have felt and seen in order to, why? If there's a possibility of preserving a marriage, if there's a possibility of bringing peace, shalom bias to this couple, I will do anything, says Hashem, to secure that. In a similar vein, Ram Mam talks about, right, there's an idea that if somebody only has money for one set of candles, and it's Shabbos and Hanukkah, right, Friday night, it's on Hanukkah, they only have money for which set of candles, which one do you do? Shabbos candles. And one of the reasons given is because the purpose of Shabbos candles is brought down in halacha to bring peace to the home, bring shalom bias to the home on a very practical level because when he comes home from shul, the house will be lit because there was no electricity at the time. But also we know it's symbolically, it's very much connected to shalom bias. Friday night's connected to shalom bias. So that comes first. When it comes to matters of peace, and of course the Torah's, the Torah's version of peace, um, we will do everything in our power to, to secure that. So so much is gleaned from that. 
another really beautiful thing. It says ish ish, right? The pasuk about Zota is ish ish ki sista isha. A man, a man, if his wife goes astray. What are we talking about here? Two men. There's Hashem, and there's the man. I say in the opposite order because the obvious one is the husband. And we're also talking about Hashem. When a person gets married, man to a woman, woman to a man. Yes, you are making a sacred bond with that person. You're becoming one. You're committing the rest of your lives to them. Mind, heart, body, and soul. You're also making a commitment to Hashem. This is also a mitzvah for Hashem. This is something sacred you're doing in the eyes of Hashem. Hashem is not only not out of the picture. He is completely part of it. So when you go astray from your husband, you're also going astray, God forbid, from Hashem. This is something that really hurts Hashem um, to the, you know, Eighth degree. So that's that. Okay. So one more thing, which is the second mitzvah of today, mitzvah 104. So I already told you that she brings up a carbon of, of uh, a sacrifice, a mincha sacrifice of barley. Um, but there's a nuance with her behavior carbon alav gomer lo yitak alav shemen. Most or all sacrifices, you put shemen, you put olive oil on the sacrifice as part of the uh, mixture or the up, you know, what you bring up. The sotas. Barley offering minimal. We're not adding anything. No oil is being added to it. Um, I know that there's so many nuances when it comes to sota. Our main objective here is to know that it's a mitzvah, cover some of the details. Um, again, mainly, mainly the mitzvah is taught as a deterrent, um, which in turn is a an encouragement for the opposite of sota, which is absolute, absolute trustworthiness and bond and connection and communication and of course the exclusivity um which is the beauty of a marriage so thank you for joining us today we will see you tomorrow